Good evening, everyone. We appreciate you tuning in to our midweek service. Thank you once again uh, for every single time that you have tuned in for our services. We hope that you are being blessed by them. We hope that you're having a great week thus far. We, we are so glad that the Lord is, uh, is helping us, helping our church. We had a wonderful service this past Sunday morning, and I encourage you to come out this coming Sunday. And uh, if you're still thinking about whether you should come out or not, I will assure you we have created a safe environment for you to come and to worship the Lord. Um, and I thank God for his help. Amen. Had a wonderful time, wonderful message, and we want to bless you tonight. Before we get into prayer, I want to make known to you our ways to give. You can give online at capitalcitycog.com. You can text GIVE to 919-849-5333. Or you can mail in your contributions to the church at 1500 Headingham Boulevard, Raleigh, North Carolina, 2760. For. And we thank you for your giving uh, every single week. Thank you so much. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. My Heavenly Father, we are thankful, God, for another opportunity to bring forth the Word of God. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint us, God, with a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that you would give me the words that need to be said. God, open up our ears, open up our hearts and minds to receive the Word of God. Let it be applied to our lives. Help us to grow from it, be strengthened by it, and God continually, Lord, bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. We're going to read uh, several scriptures here, uh, but this is where I feel like the Lord has directed our attention to for tonight. Luke chapter 4, verse number 1. The Bible says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taketh him up to, in, into an high mountain, and showed him all uh, unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou sh shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down upon from thence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. At least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. I want to preach to you from the topic this evening on don't jump. Don't jump. Amen. Amen. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. Amen. I want to tell you tonight that we are tempted by the enemy, that you and I will always be tempted by the enemy. Why is that? Because the enemy uses the way of temptation to draw us into sin, amen, to try to ultimately separate us from God. And so he uses these three ways, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and he tempts us by these three things to try to call us to fall. Amen. Satan uses this method of temptation to incite us to see him. But can I, can I just tell you this evening that if you look 
back in Isaiah chapter 14 and you find the record of the downfall of Satan. You know, he used, he, he, he failed at this as well. You know, he saw the glory of God and the honor he received. He then desired in his heart to be above God. God. He wanted to experience that. That's the lust of the flesh. Amen. And then he sought to take God's place, but he was cast out due to that. Amen. So what he, amen, what caused him to fall is what he is trying to use on you and I. Amen. And so we see this in the Garden of Eden when they tempted, when that serpent tempted Eve, he used that same method there. He tempted her with the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. We know that the Bible says that she saw the fruit, amen. She desired it and then she took it, hallelujah. And she calls her to see him and she was, her and Adam were cast out of Eden, amen. I'm telling you tonight, amen, we see it also in David's life. When David that committed sin, amen, that he saw that she he desired to have her and then he took her and he committed sin amen I want to let you know amen that we are tempted in these three ways amen but can I encourage you that the Lord was also tempted in these three ways yet he was not he did not commit sin I'm glad we're serving a savior that has been where we have been I'm glad that he amen has experience what we experience amen so he knows exactly how we feel he had been tempted yet he did not sin he was tempted with the lust of the eyes he was tempted with the lust of the flesh he was tempted with the pride of life but he did no sin thanks be unto God because we're serving a savior that overcame temptation you know what we can overcome temptation as well because we have the blood of Jesus and we have Jesus Christ protecting us and strengthening us and helping us to remain strong in Jesus name thank God thank God thank God so I want to look at tonight the the threefold temptation of Christ how he was tempted in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and encourage us tonight that we can overcome just how the Lord overcame. Thank God for that. Amen. First of all, he was tempted in with the lust of the flesh. Amen. The devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Amen. What you know what the enemy was trying to get him to do? Amen. He wanted wanted him to experience this. He wanted him to turn the stones into bread. He was tempting him with the lust of the flesh. What is the lust of the flesh? It is simply this, to experience something. Amen. The enemy wants you to experience everything of this world. He don't want you to experience the goodness of God. He don't want you to experience the mercy and the grace of God. Amen. But he'd rather you experience everything that the world has to offer. Amen. But I'm so glad tonight that we have a Savior that said, you know what? It is not, it, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You know what he was telling that devil? I don't have to experience that. All I need to do is experience the word of God. Give me the word of God. Give me the food. Give me the nourishment that comes from heaven. That's what you need tonight. You need a nourishment that comes from the Lord. Amen. We need to experience what God has to offer. Amen. I'd rather experience that because it's greater. What God has to offer is greater than anything that the world has to offer. Amen. So I want to tell you, amen, that we need to call out to God and we need to say, Lord, amen, I want more and more of you. I want to experience the goodness of God. I want to experience, amen, that oh, I want to be in a wonderful service and experience the presence of God. Oh, thank God. God that we can shout. Thank God that we can worship. Thank God that we can feel the presence of God. I'd rather experience that than anything in the world. Amen. I'm telling you, don't give in to the lust of the flesh. Amen. But 
God say, Lord, give me more of you. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Then, he, then the devil took him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said, all this power will I give thee, the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. But you have to do this. You have to fall down and worship me. Oh, yes. He was tempting him with the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes is simply this, to have something. The lust of the flesh is to experience something. Now the lust of the eyes is to want something, to have something. Amen. He tempts us many times with the lust of the eyes. The enemy will put things before us to try to draw us in. Amen. Oh, yes. He'll put the trap in front of us. Amen. He'll put the images in front of us. Amen. He, oh, yes. Amen. That serpent directed Eve to that tree. And when she saw the fruit, she saw how good it looked. Amen. She desired to have it. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank God. God, we need to have eyes that are directed to God. We need to get our eyes up the world. We need to get, oh, if some evil comes before our eyes, we need to get rid of it as quick as we can. We need to shut our eyes. We need to direct them elsewhere. We need to get them off of the things that are tempting us and trying to draw us in. God, sanctify our eyes again and let our eyes be pure and holy. The light of the body is through the eye. If we're gonna, if you're gonna be full of light, if you're gonna be full of goodness, if you're gonna have good inside your heart, it's what, what are you looking at? What you're looking at is gonna influence your heart. It's gonna affect your heart, your soul, your mind. God help us to see the good things and to get our eyes off that which is evil. God help us. Oh, yes. But you know what Jesus said? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. He was telling him, I don't need, amen, what you're trying to provide for me. All I need to do is worship God. Amen. And if he wants me to have all the kingdoms of the world, then he will give them to me. Amen. But hey, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to desire after it just because you're offering it to me for free. Come on. Amen. But I am going to direct my eyes back to God and say, Lord, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to magnify your name. I'm telling you, we need to lift up our eyes. We need to look up. Amen. We need to look towards the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Direct them to God once again. Worship him. And now we come to the last temptation. The last way he was tempted. And that is through the pride of life. And this is where I want to deal with my title on don't jump. He took him up to a, set him on a high pinnacle of the temple. And he said, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. He took him up to a high place, and he wanted him to jump. Now listen to me. The enemy, this is the pride of life. The pride of life is a desire to be something or to to be somebody. A lot of times this is what's causing people to fall. Where the enemy pumps them up, pumps up their ego, sets them on a high place only to incite them to jump. Yeah. To jump into sin, to jump into chaos, to jump into a scandal, to jump into an affair, to jump, amen, into debt. You know how many people just fall, jump into debt because they're trying to be somebody. They're trying to keep up with the Joneses. They're trying to keep up with so many other people, amen, and that pride of life has kicked in and they jumped into debt. 
pride will elevate you to only cause you to fall. But I'm preaching to you tonight on don't, don't ever jump. Don't jump. Don't let the pride of life pump you up, elevate you only to cause you to jump in the to destruction. Amen. God help us. Amen. Pride will bring you down low, will lead you to destruction. But tell that devil tonight that I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to jump. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fall before the Lord. I'm going to bow before the Lord. And I want to be humble because I don't want to come. I don't want to end up in destruction. I don't want to end up in some scandal. I don't want to end up in debt. I don't want to end up in sin. And I don't want to end up in the devil's hell. So I'm going to bow before the Lord and worship him. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't jump. Now I want you to remember this. And write it down if you want to. I want you to remember this. Pride will lead. This is what I felt like the Lord gave me in prayer. Pride will lead to a mission. But humility will lead to submission. Pride will lead to omission. You will omit God from your life. Pride of life encourages you to take your own life in your own hands. But humility says, I'm submitting myself to you, God. My life is in your hands. Yes, and that's what Jesus, that's how Jesus responded. He said, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I'm not taking my own life into my own hands and going to tempt the Lord. I'm not going to do that. But my life is in the hands of the Lord. I'm going to submit unto his authority. I'm going to be obedient unto him. And I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to say, Lord, my life is in your hands. I'm giving it to you. Glory to God. I'm submitting myself unto you. I'm telling you, we need humility. Let's get rid of the pride. Don't, don't let the pride of life cause you to fall. But overcome that and be humble. Let me give you some scriptures on humility. James, uh, no, rather, Psalms 9 and verse 12 on the last part of that, he said, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Thanks be unto God. He won't forget your cry. He won't, oh yes, he won't disregard it. He hears your cry. If you're humble and you're heartfelt and you're calling out to God, he said, the Bible says that he will hear your cry. The Lord is nigh on the kneel and of a broken heart and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. Thank you, Lord, when you hear my cry. James 4 and 6 says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. He giveth more grace. I don't know about you, but I need the grace of God every day of my life. He will give grace unto the humble. Thank God. God help me to be humble because I need your grace. Amen. James 4 and 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Amen. I'm telling you, we need to humble ourselves into the, in, in the sight of the Lord. Whenever you felt way down, whenever you felt like you couldn't make it, I'm glad that when we cried unto the Lord, he reached down and he lifted us up. He led me to that rock that's higher than high. He set my feet on a solid rock. Thanks be unto God. He helps us daily. Thank you, Lord, when you lift us up. Thank God. Thank God. And then 1 Peter 5 and 6, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. He knows when you should be promoted. He knows what you can handle. And so we have to humble ourselves. We need to start low and let him take us up higher only in due time. Only when he sees fit. Joseph went through all that he went through to come to a place where he was promoted at the right time. God had a plan for his life. God ordered his footsteps and brought him to a position of power for at the right time. 
God has a plan for your life. He knows what you can handle. He knows what you cannot handle. God, my life is in your hands. Stay humble. Don't jump. In closing, let me give you two scriptures out of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. It says, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Thank God. Find grace to help in time of need. We have a Savior that was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. He overcame. The devil departed for a season. The devil knew when he was defeated. We can make it. Oh, yes. Paul describes us as having a treasure in earthen vessels. We are the earthen vessels. We are made out of clay. The enemy knows what we have on the inside. So he wants us to forfeit that. So that's why he applies the pressure. And I'm, oh, oh, thank God, thank God for the Lord to help us when we feel the pressure of the temptation, when we feel like we're cracking, when we feel like pieces are falling off. I'm glad that we're serving a Savior that says, hey, I've been where you are at. I've been there. I know how you feel. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to provide the grace that you need. I'm going to provide the help that you need. I'm going to come by and I'm going to hold you together. I'll glue the pieces together. I'll hold you. I have you in my hands. Thank you, Lord. I have you in my hands. I've got you. I won't let you fail. I won't let you fall. And I won't let you jump. I'm going to keep you from destruction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. My heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your help. I thank you for your touch. Thank you, God, for your mercy, your grace. Thank you for your anointing. Lord, I'm thankful, God, that you are helping us daily, that we're not facing the temptation alone, but I'm so glad, Lord, that you're helping us. You're providing the help that we need in that time of trouble. You're holding us together. I pray, God, that you would strengthen every single one, that we will not give in to the lust of the flesh, that we will not give in to the lust of the eyes, and we will not give in to the pride of life. God, help us to remain strong, remain steadfast, unmovable. Amen. And can dedicate our lives to God. We don't want to omit you from our life, but we want to submit ourselves to you. We want you number one in our lives every day. God, continue to strengthen our church. Continue to help us heal our land. God, continue to bless us. We need you every single day. Day, thanks be unto God, and we love you and praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We do appreciate you tuning in. We hope this message has been a blessing to you. Come out this Sunday morning if you're able, if you're, you know, if you feel comfortable, please come out this coming Sunday morning for a wonderful time in the Lord. May God bless you. Have a wonderful night and a great rest of your week.